The, the good thing about it, intervals develop aerobic capacity better than aerobic training. So if you said to somebody, I want to get in better aerobic shape, I want to raise my VO2 max, if that was important to you, you know what they'd say? Don't do steady state stuff, do intervals. Interesting thought process, right? If you want to look better, interval training. If you want to get in better shape, interval training. The million dollar question, why does anybody do aerobic training? The 50 cent answer? Yeah, that's it. it's easy. Someone just said it's easy. I don't know why though. I mean, the reality is no, I, don't, I look at it and think no one should do it. There is no legitimate purpose for 30 or 40 minutes of cardiovascular activity based on the goals that we get stated. The only thing it's good for is if that's what you're going to do. If someone says, okay, I want to be able to run a 10K, all right, then we've probably got to do some aerobic training. We've probably got to get you ready to be able to do what it is you're going to do. But if someone says to me, I want to look better or I want to perform better, there is no evidence that conventional aerobic training helps you. None. It helps beginners because they can't interval train. So what's aerobic training good for? Nothing. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. We do, we do none. The people that we deal with, the athletes that we deal with, if people do aerobic training, they do it on their own. They do it on their off days. They do it because they want to do it. We at no time ever with our athletes do aerobic base work. I think the concept of aerobic base is a complete falsehood. I don't believe there's any need for an aerobic base. I think there's just a need to get in better shape to build work capacity. So we're going to talk about a work capacity model when we talk about athletes versus an aerobic base model. But the aerobic training is for somebody to get fit enough to do anaerobic training. Which means in my, in my world, maybe three weeks, maybe six weeks, but beyond that, it becomes a waste of time. Does this mean we've been lied to? Yes, absolutely, positively, we have been lied to. The one thing that you'll notice, and it's really, it's interesting. You know what the aerobic, now we're realizing that, okay, 80% of the audience is personal trainers, we have to, but when we look at this, just from an athletic standpoint, enough power related work must be done during the early years, ages 13 to 17, to maintain genetically determined levels of white or power related muscle fiber, promote the shift or transition of intermediate fiber to white power related muscle fiber. This is Charlie Francis, who's probably the greatest sprint coach in history. He said that, I think the book was written in 1984. And you know what he was saying? If you want to develop sprinters, don't do any aerobic work. You know why? Because he believed, and he was right, that you would genetically shift. You could take somebody, I would say, hey, if you want your kid to stink at sports, I know how to do it. Cross country. It's amazing how many people will come to and say, I'm getting my kid in cross country for the fall to get in shape. And I'm like, no, please. You know, the kiss of death, the gift of slowness, the gift that keeps on giving. You're going to stink for the rest of your life. Because you're going to shift that person, particularly if you've got a kid who's not, you know, it's one thing if you said, hey, you know, my son's got a 40-inch vertical, and he gets tired running from here to the other end of the room, then he might need a little bit of aerobic work. But if your kid's got a 19-inch vertical jump and he's struggling to make the high school basketball team, you I'm going to get him in shape by getting him doing cross-country, it's the, it's the death sentence. Exactly what we don't want. So literally with our young athletes, we almost don't, we very rarely run over 100 yards with younger ones. We might get, you know, we get to 150, by the end we get to 300. 300 yards is as far as we will ever run at one time. Pretty much really with anybody, but definitely with younger kids. Endurance work must be carefully limited to light, to light medium volumes to prevent the conversion of transitional fiber. When I read this, I read this in 1984, I believed that he was right because empirically he was developing. Because think about this. Black Canadian sprinters from Toronto. What's the probability of that? Pretty low, right? That this guy could go to Toronto, Canada and pull three Olympic medalists out of an area like Canada, a small population base like Toronto. It would literally be akin to going to Mexico and developing an Olympic hockey team. Really, it would. I mean, if you think about the probabilities, I mean, they're just not, the population base does not support what this guy did. He did something that was so far off the board, and yet he did it at a really high level. Everybody said, oh, drugs, drugs. Hey, trust me. Everybody else was using drugs, too, and every country participated in the Olympics in 1984, so it wasn't like he was the only guy. He started to realize that this was true because on long run days, Ben Johnson would hide. He would go onto the stands and hide because Ben Johnson knew intuitively that that was not good for him, that it made him worse. 
And he said, I started to understand this process. I started to realize we stopped doing long runs because I realized that my best athletes did not want to go on long runs. When I started training hockey players, same thing, everyone said, oh, you've got to get in better aerobic shape. And I looked at it and I said, you know, I don't understand. All of my best players are in the worst aerobic condition. They all have the highest vertical jumps. They're all the strongest guys. They're all the guys that are playing on the Olympic team. They're all the guys that are in the national program. And they're also all the guys that are the worst performers in any aerobic test that we do. My conclusion then was, you know something? I'm going to train everybody to be like them. Instead of looking at them and saying, what is their weakness? Fix it. I looked at them and said, their strength should be everybody else's strength. So we started training everybody to get as strong as they possibly could and as fast as they possibly could. And then worried about conditioning, worried about capacity as a secondary byproduct. And we had much better results. We had a pretty good run. During that time period, we went to the final four, I think eight out of ten years in ice hockey. And we had about, I would say, 15 guys go on and play in the NHL off of those teams in a ten-year period. And same thing. Little to no aerobic training. We've been doing that for 20-something years in spite of all these people talking about VO2 max and how important it is we've done next to none and never really worried about it.